Hello, hello, Dufro911 here, and today we're going to finish taking a look around the flight deck of the PMDG777 by looking at this central area of controls which sits between the two pilots. So let's jump straight into it. First, on the left and right side, we have two cursor control devices. On some of the displays, pilots can move a cursor to select different options, much like a mouse pointer on a computer. They can move the cursor using this touchpad device, and it works exactly the same as a touchpad on a laptop. There are also three buttons which allow pilots to activate a cursor on a particular display when it's available. In this simulation, the cursor on the display just moves as if it was your mouse cursor, so you don't have to use these touchpads. Next up, we have the control stand, which contains several levers. First, on the left, we have the parking brake lever, which simply sets the parking brake when it's pulled up. Next to that, we have a stabiliser position indicator. Rather than having a trim tab, the 777 will simply move the entire stabilizers or elevators to put the aircraft into the correct trim. Moving up to the main section of the control stand, on the left we have the alternate pitch trim levers. This allows pilots to adjust the stabilizer trim using the alternative system. Next up is the speed brake lever, which is used to extend the spoiler panels along the top of each wing. When in the forward position, the spoilers are down. When this lever is lifted up, the speed brake system becomes armed to automatically deploy the spoilers after landing. When moved further back, the spoilers can be partially or fully opened to their maximum in flight or on ground position. The next couple of controls are the thrust levers for the left and right engine. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know how these work. In front, there are two reverse thrust levers which can be lifted up to open up the reverse thrust doors on each engine to assist with deceleration after landing. Now, it's a little hard to see, but behind the thrust levers, we have these grey buttons, which are the takeoff and go around buttons. These can be used to immediately command the engines to take off or go around thrust. Both throttles also have these little black buttons on each side, which are the auto throttle disconnect switches to disable the auto throttle system. On the right hand side, we have the flaps lever, which can be used to select various flaps settings. Beside that, on the right side, we have another stabiliser trim indicator for the first officer. Beside that is the alternate flaps arm switch. This can be used to prepare the alternative flaps system for use. Below that is the alternate flaps selector, which will command the alternate flaps system to either extend or retract the flaps. At the bottom of the control stand, we have a couple more switches. First are the stabiliser cutout switches. This allows pilots to cut hydraulic power to the stabilisers in the event that unwanted stabiliser movements begin to occur. And finally, next to that, we have the fuel control switches for the left and right engines. When in the run position, this allows the fuel valves between the fuel tank and the engine to be opened, allowing fuel to flow into the engines for operation. When in the cutoff position, the valves close, cutting off fuel flow to the engines. Moving down to the aisle stand between the pilots, we have lots of panels relating to radio systems, along with a couple of other items. Much like the overhead panel, we'll start in the top left and work our way down this column of panels before moving across and down again. First up, we have the captain's radio tuning panel. This allows a pilot to tune in different frequencies into different radio systems. First we have this button here, which is the tuning panel's on-off switch. Beside that we have several buttons. This allows pilots to select the VHF left, centre or right radios, along with the high frequency left and right radios. You'll notice that when a particular radio is active, there is an indication light. 
The AM button in the middle here allows pilots to operate the high frequency radio in AM mode. Don't worry about that too much when flight simming at home. Radio frequencies and their operating modes are a whole other topic that would require a lot of explaining. Now there's a little control here which allows you to adjust the high frequency radio's sensitivity. High frequency radios are used for long distance radio communications, however the quality is usually quite poor. VHF radios, or very high frequency radios, are used for shorter distance communications and have much better quality. However, they do require line of sight between the aircraft and the radio station. At the top of the panel we have the currently active frequency on the left and the standby frequency on the right. The standby frequency can be changed using the two knobs on the right. The outer knob allows you to change the numbers before the decimal points and the smaller one allows you to change the numbers after the decimal points. To make the standby frequency the active one, you can press this little button between the two frequencies to swap them. In between the two frequencies you will also notice this little light. This will light up when the tuning panel is being controlled by a different tuning panel. So here's the same panel over on the first officer's side. You'll see that when I select the same radio on both panels, the VHF left radio, that the light comes on, indicating that both the first officer and the captain are accessing the same radio and they can both change the frequencies for that radio. The next panel is the audio control panel. This provides a means for pilots to set up all of the audio systems within the aircraft. On this panel, we have controls which relate to 10 communication systems within the aircraft. These are the VHF left, VHF center, and VHF right radios, the flight deck intercom, the cabin intercom, the public announcement system, the high frequency left and right radios, and also the SATCOM or satellite communications left and right systems. Each of these systems have identical controls which can be used on this panel. The black button on top allows a pilot to select which system they will transmit on. So this is when they speak, which system are they speaking through? Pilots can only transmit on one system at a time. The grey knob under each button allows pilots to select which communication systems they can receive audio on. They can do this by pressing the knob to select it, and in real life they can rotate it to change the volume, however this doesn't work in the sim. You can see which systems are receiving audio by the little light. And also, as you can see, it is possible to receive audio from different systems. On the left, we have the microphone and intercom switch. This switch operates like a push to talk button. When the switch is moved up to the microphone position, it will transmit from the pilot's headset or oxygen mask to the selected radio system. When it's moved to the interphone switch, it will transmit through the flight interphone system. The next switch is a VOR receiver selector. This allows pilots to monitor the audio received from the VOR left or right navigation radios, or also the ADF left or right systems. The audio received will be in the form of Morse code to confirm the identity of the selected nav aid. Like the other systems, there is a grey knob which can be pressed to receive the audio. This switch in the middle is the navigation filter selector. In real life, some voice audio can be added to a nav aid's radio frequency. For example, at my hometown airport, they use the same radio frequency for the VOR station and also the ATIS reports. This switch allows a pilot to filter what types of audio are received. V will only allow voice audio to be heard. R is for range audio, which would be the Morse code identifier, and B is for both. 
On the right, there is a loudspeaker volume control, which allows audio to be transmitted through the flight deck loudspeakers. Again, this can be pressed and rotated to control the audio. Finally, below that is the approach receiver selector. Similar to the VOR and ADF, this allows ILS Morse codes to be monitored and also the marker beacons to be monitored. The next panel is a set of controls for the weather radar. Now, unfortunately, this wasn't documented in PMDG's documentation, so I'm not sure of the exact function of each button. That said, I've never had the need to manually adjust the weather radar. The plane will automatically select the best radar settings for each stage of flight for you anyway, so I'm just going to skip over this panel. Below that we have another audio tuning panel, followed by another audio control panel. Now you'll notice that this one says data. This is a mode which a radio can operate in, and only the VHF center and right radios can operate in this mode. Moving up to the top of the middle column, the first items we have here are the engine fire switches. If a fire is detected in one of the engines, the relevant handle will light up. The handle can then be lifted and turned to discharge a fire extinguisher within the engine. There are two lights above the handles which indicates when a fire extinguisher bottle has been discharged. Below that we have a third computer display unit, which can be used to simulate cabin and public announcement calls although you can't really do anything with these in the simulator. Underneath that we find a rudder trim indicator. Below that we have controls for the aileron and rudder trim. Between those is a manual trim cancel button which will cancel the rudder trim control. Moving up and over to the right hand side we have the first officers tuning and audio control panels. The captain will typically work on the VHF left radio and the first officer on the VHF right radio. Underneath that we have the transponder panel. So first up we have the transponder window which shows us the transponder's code. The code can be changed using the two knobs underneath the window. Each knob has an outer and inner control and each of these allows a pilot to change a single number. In between those we have an ident button, which highlights the aircraft to air traffic controllers who are looking for the aircraft on their radar screens. On the right is the transponder mode selector, where you can select which mode the transponder is operating in. On the left we have the transponder selector, which allows you to operate either the left or right transponder. And finally, underneath that, we have the Altitude Source Selector to choose between the Normal or Alternate system. Moving down, we have the Emergency Evacuation Panel. The first switch under this red guard is the Evacuation Command switch. When enabled, this signals the cabin crew to begin the evacuation process. The big orange evac button is a test switch to test the evacuation system. The switch underneath is the signal horn shutoff, which will silence the evacuation alarm in the flight deck. And then lastly on the far right is a speaker for the evacuation horn. Finally, the last couple of controls here are light controls for the floor for each pilot, and also some panel and floodlights for the aisle stand. So, there you have it. That brings us to the end of this introduction to the flight deck of the PMDG Boeing 777. By watching these videos, you have given yourself an incredibly strong foundation of knowledge and understanding to move forward and begin flying this aircraft with confidence. So, thank you very much if you have been watching these introductory videos. Speaking of flying this aircraft, my next video will be the first of my procedure guides for this aircraft. Now, you know what each switch is, where it is and what it does, 
and my next videos will teach you which ones you need to press and in what order to bring the plane from being completely switched off through powering the aircraft on and getting it ready for a flight. I will take you through the procedures for taking off, for flying the aircraft, landing it and getting everything all shut down again after a long day of flying. So until the next time, thank you all very much for watching, take care out there and I will catch you all later.